Good morning, friends. Steve, back in southern Illinois today. Morning doves are cooing in the background. And as you can see, my jungle here in the pergola is uh, starting to encroach. But it's good to be home. Um, we were in Oklahoma, which is on the other side of the big COVID outbreak in Missouri and Arkansas. The hospitals there are overwhelmed right now, and it's spreading like wildfire. <clears throat> so we just kind of held our breath all the way across the state of Missouri, uh, only stopped when absolutely necessary. It was reassuring to go to Taco Bell and find out that they would not let us inside, and the staff were masked, that nobody on the street was. So at least some people are trying to take COVID seriously still. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Today wraps up our um, conversations about prophecy. And there's a lot more that we could talk about, but we've done the basics here, okay? Um, prophecy as a touchstone to a spiritual life brought strength to the lives of the people in the Bible because it gave them confidence that God knew the future, knew how to deal with it, and was actively working to make that future become their reality. So they could live in the present and be present to the people and the circumstances around them rather than constantly trying to create tomorrow. This week we were with my brother and my parents, and uh, in preparation I asked them about some stories about our topic. The title of this week's Bible guide was, Jesus Will Be Coming Soon. And I asked them for some stories about waiting, and I was, I was looking for stories about joyful anticipation and looking forward to someone coming. <laughs> That's not what I got at all. Instead, I got stories about being left behind. Vivian has this story from her childhood. Um, she was at church, and there was there were these stories uh, the stairs the stairs on the front of the church had these handrails that the kids like to climb down on the wrong side of the steps and she was only four or five but she was a big girl and she was playing out there and having a good time climbing down these stairs like the, the big kids did her grandpa came outside and said well, hi, Vivian. Um, are you the only one here? Where are your mom and dad? And she looked around and they went inside and mom and dad were nowhere to be found. So Grandpa said, well, why don't you come home with me? They lived close to each other, okay? Well, not really close. Mom and dad would have to come about 15, 20 miles to pick her up, but <laughs> Grandpa took her home with him, and then he called Vera, Vivian's mom, and he said, Vera, did you forget something at church? And she said, oh my, did I leave my Bible there again? Uh, no, it's right here, and there's my quarterly. I, I, I don't think so. He said, Think carefully, Vera. Did you forget something at church? Well, it turned out they'd had company home for dinner, and you know you know what happens when company's coming home, coming home for dinner. Everything is in an uproar in Mom's mind. <laughs> Dads are never responsible for getting the kids. Remember that, okay? But, um, okay, so that was Vivian's story that she brought, and one of the other family members brought a story about coming home from academy on the bus and mom and dad were supposed to pick her up to t to take her the the uh, 10 miles to home and 
nobody showed up. And she's there. This was a small town. The bus station closed. She's out on the sidewalk with her suitcase and a guy she doesn't know riding a motorcycle stops and offers her a ride home. Now, this was a few years ago and <clears throat> and she accepted and miraculously she got home okay but she has never forgotten in fact today her sense of risk is heightened and that sense of being abandoned is very real in her mind another person told a story about a date that um, she was ready to go to and he never showed up but another guy saw her standing out sitting outside on the porch and stopped by and asked her if she wanted to go to the dance with him and her date was already an hour late and she said sure and so she's at the dance and they're having a gay old time and in walks her date uh, very sheepish and chagrined and upset that she had not waited for him why is it that our stories of waiting so often involve disappointed hopes Are our stories about Jesus any different? It's been a long time since he went away. Has he forgotten about us? Have we been stood up? Or has he just decided, ah, it's not worth coming back? When we look at the lives of the people in the Bible, they had reasons not to believe those things. Jesus will come for you. In John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, it's one of my favorite passages. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. In my Father's house, there are many, many rooms. If it wasn't that way, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Jesus will come for you. As the disciples saw him leaving, he rose up into the sky and disappeared into the clouds above them. And they were standing there looking up and two angels appeared next to them and said, you men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up? This same Jesus that you saw ascend into heaven will come back in the same way. Jesus will come for you. Paul, in expressing his hope in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 17, we read it last week, uh, he, he puts it in such graphic language. Jesus descending with a loud shout, with the, the cry of the archangel, with a trump of God. And he wakes the dead from the grave and they wake from their sleep and they rise to meet him in the sky. But as they are rising, all of a sudden we start going with them. And together we meet Jesus in the clouds and are with him forever. But when? The big 
pro prophecies of the Bible give us a timeline marching towards the end of this world's history. We've gone through the big four dominant kingdoms. We're living in the middle of the chaos where nobody's in charge, nobody's in control, everybody's striving, striving for dominance. Next thing on the agenda is Jesus coming in the clouds. In Matthew 24, Jesus talked to his disciples and gave them some signposts, things to watch for that would alert them to the nearness of his coming. They've all been fulfilled. And the book of Revelation, most of it is history already. Very few events in, in Revelation yet to, be, to occur. Friends, it could be any time now. But you know what? For us as individuals, none of that matters. Paul said that whether we're dead or alive, we will see Jesus coming in the clouds. That means that as far as my personal experience is concerned, Jesus will come in my lifetime. If I'm alive, I'll look up when I hear the trumpet sound. If I'm dead, I'll look up when I hear the trumpet sound because he will raise me up. As far as I can experience it, I'll fall asleep as I die and become unconscious, and suddenly it'll be like waking up to the trumpet calling me. Jesus will come in my lifetime and in yours. The only question is, will I want to see him. And see, this is really the crux of this touchstone. Big P prophecies, the prophecies of the Bible about human history are all dependent on our acceptance of God, our acceptance of his love, of a relationship with him, of a surrendering our lives to follow him to live our lives as he has taught us. If I love him, I'll be happy to meet him. If I've chosen not to believe in him and I've rejected him, chosen not to live my life the way he instructed, it'll be another story. But that will be my choice, not his. He calls all of us to come to him. He offers all of us the hope of a happy ever after. He offers all of us guidance in our lives. Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, keep looking up. I'll see you next week.